A very good morning and welcome back to those of our viewers who are returning after our new service. This is World Talks and I'm your host, Claudia Czerwinska. The war in Ukraine has demonstrated the military capabilities of Iran, which delivers arms supplies to Russia, among others. Experts point out that these weapons are not inferior to Russian-produced ones, and in many cases their quality is actually much better. Russia is happy to buy licenses from Iran for weapons that prove effective on the front line in Ukraine. I will talk about the close military technological relationship between the Russian Federation and Iran with my guest Elias Aguili Denavi from Abbasid Foundation. Foundation Fund. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining me here on World Talks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and good morning to all the audience. The pleasure A is mine. A very good morning to you too. So as we're looking at this recent Iranian massive uh, ballistic attack and drone attack on Israel, this shows that despite the, um, the support lines and the defense lines when it comes to missiles in Israel, which are made of um, different defense systems that are provided by the allied countries such as the US, the UK and France, um, some missiles have actually reached the targets. We know of nine hits that were reported. Uh, some sources even say of 12 that struck uh, an air base, among others. Um, and so I wanted to ask you if the West is actually aware of what kind of technology is at Iran's disposal. Well, uh, it's indeed the question of uh, many news agencies and uh, also uh, the security studies scholar that uh, what technology the Iranians are using at the moment. And in order to answer this very vital question, uh, it's crucial for us to go through the history to understand how uh, the uh, Iranian technology regarding the use of missiles have evolved during the past uh, four decades. Back in the 80s and during the Iran-Iraq war, uh, the Iranian artillery didn't have the capabilities to hit uh, Iraq or to uh, reply back uh, kind of based on a plan or based on a, a military schedule. The artillery could only hit uh, like uh, in a depth of 35 kilometers into Iraq. So the Iranians started to uh, have some kind of negotiations with some neighboring and far neighboring countries. Uh, by neighboring, I mean uh, the countries uh, kind of that 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 built the same ideology with the Iranian at the time. Libya was one of those countries that helped Iran, and uh, they gave them uh, 30 Scott Class B missiles with the uh, relevant military consultants. Uh, after uh, the Iranians bought missiles from Libya, they started to retreat. So the, the, they hit Kirkuk as their first target. After that, the Arabian countries started to, uh, to put the pressure on the Libyan government and the military consultants left Iran, leaving all the missiles not useful. So the Iranians started what we call now the reverse engineering from the 80s. So from the 80s till now, they have invested heavily in this technical evolution. After the uh, Islamic revolution, and the uh, weapon uh, sanctions that were imposed uh, on the Iranian government, the cheapest and easiest way to uh, kind of increase the defense capabilities uh, for Iran was to invest on missiles. Because missiles, missiles, they don't need pilots and uh, you don't need to invest on the human resources uh, to control them. Uh, I can say that based on the international statistics from Global Fire to other uh, informative sources, the Iranian missile program is one of the most complex and effective ones internationally. Iran mm -hmm. has the biggest and largest uh, missile arsenals in the Middle East and uh, with a variety of missiles ranging from short range uh, missiles to medium range cruise to ballistics. 
So uh, you you said that um, in terms of missiles, they're they're very advanced because that's what they're focusing on. So my counter question would uh, be: Does Israel have appropriate technology? Because we know that Israel has a lot of great technology. For example, the very famous uh, Iron Dome that has been extremely successful, extremely expensive at the same time, but successful at shooting down those missiles and drones during the previous attack as well. Uh, but do they have appropriate technology in order to be able to counter those attacks, considering those hits that we saw only recently? Well, uh, it's really important uh, to focus on uh, the realities of the battlefield and the, the, the tactics and techniques that the both sides are using. The previous attack, uh, if you go, th go through the articles and proposals presented by scholars in terms of security studies or military studies, was more like a simulation attack. The Iranians were testing uh, the defense system of Israel and also the countries in between. Because uh, we saw that the Jordanians and uh, some uh, even uh, airplanes from the uh, U.S. Uh, airplane carriers were involved in uh, kind of attacking uh, the missiles that were fired from Iran. So it was, to some extent, a simulation to check the defense system of Israel and also the other countries involved in the process. Uh, recently, uh, something like eight months ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Iranians uh, un unveiled a new uh, inventive missile called, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Fatah II. This is a hypersonic cruise missile that can uh, pass a distance of uh, 1,605 kilometers. And this is a very uh, new and up-to-date technology that makes it hard uh, for the Iron Dome to uh, intercept uh, those missiles because the warhead of these missiles interact grouply when detached from the main body of mm -hmm. the missile. So the warheads can be controlled and they can maneuver in a group action. So uh, they, they can be easily controlled uh, within Iran. So this is a very high-tech uh, technology, and I can say that what we are witnessing now is not only a battle of missiles, but also is a battle of a technology, a one offensive and one defensive, and at, at, at one time it's defensive mm -hmm. and offensive. But considering how fast you said the technology went forward in terms of missiles in Iran, the ones that they're currently using, uh, how much time, in, uh, according, to, according to you, do you think that Israel would um, have to spend in order to be able to up their game and to up their uh, technological defenses? Is it possible at all? Well, uh, considering the current condition and situation, uh, I don't think that it's possible to achieve uh, such a defense system in such a short notice because we don't know what's going on in the Middle East. Middle East is a, a region of very interconnected and complex procedures. Uh, we don't know, uh, we, don't, we are not sure about the intentions uh, of the actors. So uh, we are now seeing that the uh, different sides of the story are working with compromise, like they let each other know in advance mm -hmm. through different channels. Like the Iranian uh, make sure to update the Americans through uh, their current diplomatic channels, like the Switzerland embassy in Taiwan. And this is uh, to decrease uh, the amount of casualties or uh, the uh, unnecessary harms, I call it. So we can see now that the, the different sides of the story are trying to contain and retrain from escalating the current state of affairs. But at the same time, we cannot predict. So it's really hard to predict that uh, both sides, not even Israel, even Iran, mm -hmm. have the enough time to make themselves ready for further uh, actions or for further movements uh, of their enemy. So it's really a uh, time, uh, kind of time oriented and uh, geopolitical, uh, uh, orient, geopolitical oriented uh, to predict.
So we mentioned we mentioned the support for Iran in terms of technology when it comes to the Middle Eastern area, but I wanted to mention North Korea because there's been a decades-long cooperation between Iran and North Korea. Um, North Korea, as we know, has now 50 nuclear warheads. And in terms of technology, I wanted to ask, is this support from North Korea for Iran actually of significance? Uh, do we know any numbers? Do we know any figures? Do we know technology that is actually being delivered to Iran? from North Korea and how significant that support is? Well, uh, it dates back, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the effective support from the North Korean side dates back to the uh, eight-year-old war between Iran and Iraq. Uh, if we talk international relations and based on the uh, current uh, theories of realism and we, and we expand them to the realities of the world, we can see that the Iran, Tehran is not uh, trying or is not wanting to experience the same thing it experienced during the eight-year-old war. Uh, there, were no, there were no missiles to protect the cities in the so-called war of the cities that Saddam Hussein began. Uh, he technically uh, started to hit different cities, civil civilians, and the Iranians didn't have the means to protect themselves. So they started to resort to their uh, neighbors and also the far neighbors that bear the same ideology, and one was North Korea. Uh, but it was not the first country that helped them. Iranians first went to Syria, uh, Libya, and then uh, when the war was uh, at the end, uh, they a, a delegation went to Pyongyang to start a very intensive negotiation. And that was very important because the Iranian engineers later used those negotiations and used those missiles for revenge, uh, for reverse engineering. So we can see that the technology uh, that the North Korean uh, gave or helped Iranian beef was used later to develop the uh, Iranian missile industry. Uh, I can say that now uh, the, the industry and technology that the uh, missile industry of Iran is using is far more uh, advanced than it was uh, like three, three decades ago. Uh, heavily invested, heavily worked on uh, for the sake of protection, for the sake of protecting the people and the country's integrity. Uh, as I said, when we speak international relations, we have to uh, notice so many important aspects mm -hmm. of countries' integrity and the right to defend, because we are always focusing on one side of the story. We don't. We, we usually, this is the effect of uh, I say media, which is apart from uh, the political science. Uh, the operational definitions help us to understand better. Uh, this country is sanctioned and. Uh, cannot advance the other parts of its program. So the best way to defend itself is to use all the technologies possible from any country possible. But now, if we speak for the moment, I can say that uh, there is no uh, interaction between the Iranian government and the North Korean regime. Uh, anything that any, any kind of cooperation belongs to the past. But it was very vital, but it was very important, and it is visible now in the Iranian missile industry. Obviously, we are talking about technology, but uh, especially during conflicts like these, the international relations are at the forefront, and they're absolutely vital when it comes to um, any further deals, especially in terms of technology. Elias Sigili Danavi from the Abbasid Foundation Fund, thank you so much for joining me this morning for this very, very important and interesting talk. Thank you again. Thank you so much for the invitation, and let's hope for a peaceful war. Without let's bars hope and for a peaceful enemies. resolution, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a lot. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that was my latest guest talking about uh, the relationship of technology in between Iran and other neighboring countries. Uh, you are watching World Talks. My name is Claudia Czerwinska. Please stay tuned with us here on TVP World.